when it comes to people who go to the gym mm-hmm. as an orthopedic doctor what are some exercises that you would avoid so basically three things very simple um overhead heavy i mean you can go stretch but no military press number one number two crunches avoid it number three deadlifts okay got you so i'd probably replace the military press because it's for the anterior delts mm-hmm. with just front raises yeah or Fair. bend down you can go bend down raise it rather okay. than overhead got you yeah the crunch out replace with planks planks bridges Yeah, yeah very can, good for course you can do that thing yeah uh, mm-hmm. and the deadlifts i would yeah. probably replace with those lower back uh exercises you know like a reverse yeah you can you can up. do that or or like you know seated glute uh, extension so you can you can do multiple things the reason is i see more injuries than benefits with the deadlift you know if you're really well trained have a good muscle balance do it but if you're trying to get better that's one thing you may want to avoid yeah. because the risk of injury is very high yeah i think you have not talking to the nerd gymers yeah we're talking to the people who just want to stay healthy exactly the there's so many other exercises you can compensate without doing these things gotcha yeah. okay next question considering that most of our spines are degrading because we're sitting down most of the times yeah. at the office right that's a whole generation uh what can you do to degrade the degradation of your spine so number one starts not in the office outside the office so you got to work on your core and abdominal as well as back exercises because that's what dictates whether you're going to sit upright or not right number one number two is like ergonomic which i don't need to tell everybody talks about it like ergonomic arrangement of your computer or sitting and all those lumbar pillow as well plenty of hydration because that keeps your muscles not get fatigue tired and periodic breaks you just get up walk and even simple things like when you're sitting and if you have a little bit of a foot rest that takes the pressure off your lumbar spine mm. versus sitting like this versus just a little bit of foot rest and i sit on a ball in my office like i don't sit on a chair because ball will force me to sit upright So when I'm upright I'm engaging my core. You're talking so about I'm, bosu ball. Yeah, not bosu ball, the bo- big exercise ball. Like a big yeah, 75 okay, gotcha. mm gotcha. exercise ball. So I'm automatically doing my exercise while working. Your core is engaged. The core is engaged. So I'm not I'm not doing uh, this, I'm not doing that. Wow. I'm not saying do that, but that's something that I learned it works great for me because I do have back problem as well. So I would say do all these things. and then work beyond the office like you know go back and work on your core planks bridges then you can avoid or prevent a lot of these conditions how expensive is it to store stem cells um so it could be de- dependent on which country you're doing um it is really not that expensive really? uh i mean when i say not that expensive is somebody you can afford to have uh, um these procedures but if you if you can if you, if you consider the western cost it is expensive it could be like anywhere from 10 to 20000 dollars uh for no 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 for a 10 year plan 20 year plan Ooh, like that yeah that's that's yeah but depending on depending on the country depending on where you're doing uh that kind of stuff so i since i don't do it myself so i'm not really familiar with the pricing but i remember it was it was in that range yeah wow so yeah. you said up to $20000 i'm assuming you're talking about a good facility and everything which means to us 16 16 lakhs in total for 20 years which means about 80000 rupees a year roughly yeah i mean it could be much more expensive depending on the institute you're going okay. and uh, so um yeah i mean like it's not outrageous if somebody is really trying to I mean, get better like particularly as i was telling like these professional athletes that's nothing for them i mean yeah, yeah membership yeah, to a great club yeah in mumbai is a lot more expensive than yeah that. yeah yeah like so probably 3 lakh 4 lakh rupees a year yeah versus spending about a lakh or two yeah storing your stem cells for yeah. a period of two decades yeah yeah not bad yeah but again as i said like you know it's happening in countries where 
there is not much of a regulatory uh, controls. <laughs> so you got to be very, very careful when you think about those things. Gotcha. You got to know who is credible. Um, so uh, all those factors have to be in place in order to think about that. Yeah. yeah. The bad boys are still going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they will. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, more rapid fire questions. Yes, sir. Arthritis. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of the most common problems in India especially when it comes to aging women. Correct. Um yeah. I think the protocol at this point is a lot of women visit a knee doctor when they have pain mm-hmm. and the knee doctor gauges the level of pain gauges the level of degradation yeah and then tells them whether to go for surgery or to go for preventive care. Right. Right? Um can they come to a doctor like yourself who's more about regenerative therapy? Mhm. Um uh, and if yes then how does arthritis get healed through stem cell therapy so arthritis by definition is you losing the soft tissue between the bones right like say like we're talking about knee so you have uh, the bones and once you start losing the cartilage which is like a cushion like our carpet uh, like a rubber meniscus when you start losing we lose as we age or we lose with injuries as well So as you go thinner 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 um then you, the pain gets worse your function uh, is is decreased you have a lot of pain and you're getting bone on bone so that means it is little too late that's called stage 4 arthritis the patients cannot walk so those patients need knee replacement so it's it's a fact that needs to be done so they have to go but arthritis never starts with stage 4 arthritis always starts like somebody like 40s 50s 60s with small pain little meniscus injury or like some internal injury creates imbalance in your knee then you start wearing out the next year it gets worse and the cartilage goes down next year gets worse so you start at 1 go to 2 go to 3 4 is when you get the surgery but all these years we didn't have in between treatments like what we are talking right we didn't have biologic treatments we didn't have bone marrow cells we didn't have platelets so people used to exercise diet and restrict their lifestyle not to go anywhere go to four do it but stage 3 2 have tremendous advantage if we can address them at this stage like for example the stage 3 or 2 that means you moderately degenerated we inject the cells into them and they say like hey i'm 70 80% better and i'm able to exercise i'm able to enjoy my life then you don't go to stage 4 anymore so you don't need that surgery so you can avoid it even better if i can get at stage 1 and 2 so the faster you recognize the faster you feel like there's something going on we examine we x-ray you we mri scan you we find out don't wait till like oh i'll come when it's too bad when it's too bad means you're letting the stages go so 1 2 3 absolutely can benefit and to a point you can get excellent results early you can get good results even late not too late got gotcha. you okay um, i'm sorry i, I was not fast that's fine, answering that's fine. that no, thing this is yeah, it's yeah. a it's yeah. an important okay, okay. piece of yeah, this yeah. podcast because it's yeah. a very common problem right 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 yeah. another very common problem that we see in india i see mm-hmm. this with a lot of girls they've got neck and cervical issues um yeah it's because most of the cervical conditions like we call it spondylosis like disc nerves facets ligaments right any kind of neck pain you see in both sexes but mostly in women and again when you say only neck it almost never happens only neck you know mm. the spine is one unit it goes from here to there right if you have a bad neck you're going to compensate with your back or your thoracic spine so or if you have a bad back you can have the same problem so they go hand in hand so when we evaluate a spine you always have to evaluate the whole structure how are your mechanics but gotcha. that is very true you see that a lot in women Yeah. yeah. I think it manifests in women my age as not being able to move your neck, mm-hmm. having a lot of shoulder pain, mm-hmm. etc etc. Again, could they opt for stem cell therapy? Yeah. Well, not everyone needs stem cell therapy. Say like if we're dealing with the facets, ligaments, wear and tear, 
tendonitis, or sometimes, as I said, the muscles can be atrophied. Sometimes the high concentration of platelets is good enough. You do not need, some people have this uh, radiating pain, the numbness yeah. and stuff. A lot of times we do just a high concentration of platelets and prolotherapy in that area, and they improve a lot. Gotcha. You only need stem cells when your discs are getting degenerated or you have severe arthritic changes, then you need stem cells. But whatever we spoke about are the early signs of the disc getting degenerated, right? Yes, yes, okay. yeah. So if you have this chronic kind of pain in a particular region, take care of it. Over. Take care of it, yeah. Life has taught me something that I'm going to repeat. I've already said this on the show. Mm -hmm. Life has taught me that if you are in any kind of fitness, go find yourself a sports physio at the age of 25 or 26. Correct. Correct. They'll help you with your posture. They'll help yeah. you with your core strength. They'll help you with exercises that you have never heard about or never thought about. Yeah. You won't believe that those kind of exercises exist. Yeah. And it's been a game changer for me. Absolutely. And yeah. I'm from a doctor's family, so I know the value of doctors as well. Yeah. But a uh, sports physio is mm. trained. Yeah. To help you stay fit in the long term. Absolutely. And also physically he can see you, how you're doing, what your form is yeah. while you're doing. So it's very important. Some good trainers are also there, but also bad trainers. So be careful. As you said, the sports physios are more medically oriented. So they know the conditions. So absolutely. I mean, there's, I mean, that's, it, it's a combined uh, um, big ecosystem. In order to have a healthy you, you got to have somebody who can guide you. What are the proper ways of moving, exercising, and all those? Gotcha. When you have injuries, we are there. But when you're working out, they're there. So it's it's when you follow all these, and as you take ownership of yourself, eat the right food, and have good disciplinary lifestyle, you'll <coughs> achieve your goals. Hey, if you enjoyed today's clip, make sure you check out all the other clips we've uploaded on this channel. You'll find a clip related to almost every single topic as long as you're willing to search for it.